Hello and welcome back to the SAT Masterclass by ACIE. Today is our day 3 and we will be continuing with the reading and the writing section of SAT. Last time we were discussing more on the reading section. So anything that had to be with purpose of the text, details, a summary and more. Other day we will be discussing more on the grammar questions of the SAT. And the question types that we have is transitions, form, structure and sense and boundaries. So in these questions, I would say basically transitional words taken data, punctuations, different tenses, everything will be covered. And while all of these are something you've already studied school, man, there are still a few tips and tricks that I can give you to increase their accuracy in your SAT. So moving on, our first topic of the day is going to be transitions. And here we're just supposed to find the most suitable transitional words for any of the questions. So first of all, we have transitional words. So any sentence, sorry, any word that is going to be used between data different sentences to connect these two sentences is going to be our transitional sentence. It's basically transitioning one sentence to another sentence. But while it's also transitioning sentences, it a lot of times transitions between two similar ideas or two different ideas as well. So, altogether we have four different types of transitional words. One, agreement or disagreement. Two, sequence and order. Addition and exemplification and cause and effect. So, moving on to firstly the agreement and disagreement, right? So, when we are given two different sentences, and the second sentence, the first sentence, let's support the example someone say, it's agreeing with the first sentence. So, in such cases, we can use agreement transitional verbs or transitional words. For example, similarly, again, corresponding, equally, likewise. Similar to this, we have disagreement type of transitional verbs, which include words that can be used as transitions when the second text or the second sentence is disagreeing with the first sentence. And this could, like we say, we can use words such as However, conversely, on the contrary, on the other hand, nevertheless, and more. This example could be something like, he likes going out for coffee. However, since she is an introvert, she prefers to stay home. So, it's just showing that between the two different people, there is different interest and they are not staying whatsoever. So, it's the case, Masi, we can use disagreement types of transitional words. Along that, we have transitional words which include addition of something. For example, additionally, also, furthermore, moreover, in fact. So when a certain statement or sentence is given and we want to add another sentence supporting it or giving more information on it, then we can use addition types of transitional words. For example, I can say that she is a great student. Additionally, last time in a book, she scored about 95%. So, I am giving more information on the fact that she is a really good student. Similarly, we have exemplification. We are going to be giving any kind of examples in this. So, we can use words such as, for example, for one thing, to demonstrate, for instance, or like. So, anything that is showing that we are giving another example is going to fall under this data. And then we have cause and effect. Basically, if the first statement is the cause and the second statement becomes its effect, then we can use such transitional words like therefore, since, because, consequently and thus. So, we sure to know what the different sentences are and what the relations are. And then we have sequence and order. So, to show that the data could be or a certain order, we can use certain words like previously, then later, before, subsequently. For example, I went to office today. Subsequently, I had gone out with my family today morning for some stuff that I had to buy. So we can come up with different transitional words and we can use them in different ways as well. Here's an example. In a heated debate in biogeography, the field is divided between dispersalists and vicariancist. There are those who argue that dispersal is the most crucial determining factor 
and a species distribution. And those who insist that vicarians separation due to geographic barrier is Biogeographer Isabel San Martin counts herself among neither. So the, over here we have a gap and now we have to fill it in with the most suitable transitional word. So for that we have to find out the relationship between the first line and the second line. First line of one you go, sir. It is a heated debate in geography. The field is divided between dispersalists and vicarian cyst. Dash, there are those who argue that dispersal is the most crucial determining factor and blah blah blah. So basically, we know that the second sentence is giving us basically an explanation on what the debate is about and what the two different sides are, who are dispersalists and who are vitarians. What is the difference between these two and what makes them so different? So there's that explanation. So we have to use a transitional word. So when they say your explanation while I part like say, so first we have furthermore, which means that we're adding more to it, right? Yeah, it could be one of the answers because it seems like something more is being added. But also at the same time, we have to realize that there's a difference between adding something versus explaining something. And right now they're not adding something new, but instead they are explaining something that has already been said. So furthermore is not going to be our answer. B is by contrast, which is basically a disagreement and there is no agreement disagreement in here it's just explanation so we cannot be our answer c is similarly furthermore a similarly one ago pretty much we are adding on more things we are adding new things and here we aren't giving another example we aren't Sanit saying another sentence that is supporting the previous sentence we're just explaining so c cannot be the right answer and d says that is that is basically means that it's explaining something. Therefore, D is going to be our right answer. So this is how you can deal with the transition type of questions. So just know what the different relations can be between two different sentences and just use the correct transitional word depending on the relation that you have discovered. Moving on, the second topic of the day is going to be forms, structures and tense. And here we'll be covering a lot of grammar. I and mean, most of these content that we'll be studying over here is something we've already studied, we're already well aware of, so this should not be really hard. Overall, this question type again is divided into five different types, which is subject verb agreement, pronoun antecedent agreement, verb form, subject modifier placement, and plural possessions. So here, what I'm supposed to do is we will be given a blank or blank space in a sentence and we have to use the word which matches with the standard English convention the best and that has to be our answer. So moving on to subject verb agreement. All of the rules of subject verb agreement is already known. We are well versed in it. So we don't need to move on too much in it. As long as we can solve the questions properly, it should be fine. So the question over here is, despite claims that Columbus's journey to the Americas was filled with harsh weather, records show that the sea were fairly calm for the duration of the trip. So the options are no change, shows, is showing, and has shown. So over here, the line, sorry, the word show has been underlined. Now, since it is just after records and it is a verb used for the noun records, a plural noun that is. We know this very common rule of subject verb agreement, which is that if there is a plural noun, there will be a singular verb. So there is a plural noun and vice versa. So the option B is incorrect because it is a plural verb. C is saying it is showing, which is the present tense. But this incident happened a very long period of time ago. So C is not going to be our answer. And D is has shown. But this could have been our answer because it is saying that something happened before. We're only finding it right now, which does help us with the answer. But the main problem is has. Instead of has, it should have been have. Therefore, D is not the right answer. So A is our right answer, which means 
it's completely fine on itself and we don't need to make any changes on it. Now we have pronoun antecedent agreement. So I'll read the question and I'll make you understand what it is about. Ten of William Shakespeare's play are classified as histories, although each of these plays, which include Henry V and Richard III, dash on a single historical figure, specifically an English king. Some, such as Henry VI Part I and Henry VI Part II, feature different episodes from the same monarch's life. Which choice completes the text so that it conforms to the convention of standard English? So over here we have 10 of the William Shakespeare's play are classified as history. Although each of these plays, which include blah 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 and blah blah, this is a non-essential clause. Therefore, a sentence is still complete even if you remove this part or don't read this part out loud. So although each of these plays dash, so we know that we have a comma over here, right? So a word that is going to be describing after the comma is going to be supporting to this because this is the word just before the comma. So here we're discussing about the plays, which is in plural. Now the choices that given to us are A focuses, B focus, C are focused, and D were focused. Although each of these play focus plays focuses, A is not going to be our answer because it's a plural verb and like we just studied before, plural noun, plural verb does not work out. B focus, it could be one of the answer. And in, in fact this is the right answer because C is also plural and D is also plural. Therefore, B, since it's a singular verb, becomes our right answer. So just be sure that you know if there is a non-essential clause. And just know that when there is something, please, comma, and something, then this word is trying to describe this word and nothing else. We have verb forms now. And the question is, while many spiders use web to catch their food, other capture prey using hunting or borrowing techniques. Spider from the family Tenizidae, often called trapdoor spiders, dash their burrows with those using their silk for hinges. Which choice completes the text? So over here again, this is a non-essential clause. It's giving us extra information, but the sentence is still complete without it. Spiders from the family, blah, blah, blah dash their burrows with doors using their silks for hinges. So spiders are the one being questioned over here which is in plural form. So do keep a note of that along with the tenses as well. So first there's cover. B are covering which will not be the right answer because it's plural verb. C will have covered will not be the answer because this is something that has been going on for so long and you cannot just use something like that and D is had covered which could be the answer but since it's something that still goes on and is not something that only happened in the past but you see it's not something past or matter only or it's not something future only it's something even in the present tense so A is most likely going to be our correct answer so if you read the sentence spiders from the family blah 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 Cover their burrows with doors using their silks for hinges, which makes perfect sense. Now we have subject modifier placement to example. During the list of edible objects that have traveled miles above the earth, two Swedish men attached a donut to a weather balloon along with a camera in 2015. So just like before, I gave you an example of how comma can play a big role. Yanira, we have Joining the list of edible objects that have traveled miles above the earth. So we are giving a description about a certain object which has traveled above the earth's surface itself. And then after the comma it has been said two Swedish men. After the comma two Swedish men only basically it seems that this, this description is about the two Swedish men. But it's not. It's about the object that these two Swedish men need. So this placement over here is completely wrong and it should not be placed like this. So instead, we have to keep the object that has flown above the earth's surface just after the comma, which is the donut. 
So A is incorrect because no, there has to be some changes made. B says, a donut was attached to over the balloon and a camera by two Swedish men in 2015. A donut is a which is the right way of doing it. But let's just see the other options as well. C, a weather balloon and a camera were attached to a donut. Donut is again not in the first place. So C is not our answer. And D, a camera attached to a weather balloon by two Swedish men. Again, to a donut, which is again at the last which should have been in the first. So, D is not the answer. Therefore, B is our correct answer. Join the list of edible objects that have traveled miles above the earth. A donut was attached to a weather balloon and a camera by two Swedish men in 2015. Now, we have plural, plural possessives. Some people's eyes are unusually susceptible to eye floaters, moving spots that are often caused by flecks of collagen. Over here, it's Better to understand what are plurals, what are possessives, and how we can use it. So we have plurals such as heroes, fans, etc., which is showing the equivalent object ko dhere so more than one object So there are many fans, there are many heroes, blah blah blah. And then we have singular possessives, which includes words like fans or pearls. So in words like this, the epistrophe is used after the word and then after the epistrophe matra is tahidunta. So the noun itself, then the epistrophe, then the s to describe a singular possessive. But plural possessive described by the Hayese, we have something like this. So after the S matra, epistrophe is used. So, without F S O P use gari ko unsa bani that is a plural. S ko agari F S O P use gari ko sa the singular possessive. And if S ko pachi use gari ko sa bani it is a plural possessive. After you understand this much, solving this type of question should not be hard. So the question over here is: Some people's eyes are unusually susceptible to eye floaters, moving spots that are often caused by flex of collagen. So. The underlying part over here is people's eyes. And if you translate it in Nepali, it basically means koi manche haru ko akha. It means that those eyes belong to certain people. So it cannot just be without an epistrophe because it's showing that it is singular possessor. And singular possessor is shown by people, epistrophe and S. So a is not the right answer and D is not, right, not the right answer. But instead, because they have both have singular possessives, people. So, it might be either B or C as the right answer. Now, some people's eyes are... Eyes over here, if the epistrophe is kept at the end, which means that you plural possessive. But when you say it in Nepali, some people are unusually susceptible, blah, blah, blah. We don't say koi manche ko koi manche aru ko If we have to keep this over here, then it basically means that and it's grammatically incorrect because it's people's eyes that are seeing, but it's not that people's ko eyes ko in certain part. Over here, instead of saying just people's ko eyes, if someone said some people's eyes or near or something along the lines of that, maybe that might have made sense. But Without any other reference, C makes no sense. Therefore, B is our correct answer. Over here, we'll be discussing on linking clauses, supplements, and also punctuation. Moving on, first of all, before even starting any of it, we have to know sentence one ko kyo, ani fragment one ko si kosto unsa. Sentences are basically statements that are complete. So she likes going out, or his favorite drink is coffee. They are complete sentence because it includes a noun, it includes a verb. Nothing is pending, it has been completed properly. Fragment one goes there, although she likes going out. Now, if it was just she likes going out, it in itself is a complete sentence. But the second you add the word although, I'm your sentence completed on the back is again to all the meaning that there is more to add. So in this case, this becomes a fragment. 
So a sentence is a complete statement, whereas a fragment is an incomplete statement. And we have certain ways of linking a sentence and a sentence versus a fragment and a fragment. Sorry, a fragment and a sentence. So whenever you have to combine a fragment with a sentence, we either use a comma or we use a fanboy. Comma, so we, we all know what comma is. Fanboy basically is a small, you know, cut down word, which basically means for and nor but f a n p or yet and s so it's fan voice so these are the words that you can use instead of using a comma to show a relationship between a fragment and a sentence whereas between two sentences if you want to link with a sentence say this the case mantra either there is a full stop the most basic one or we can also use a comma and a fanboy together and also we can use a semicolon instead of it so here will be a few examples already funny but these are just the basic information that you have to know for example he likes to drink tea full stop she likes going out they are two completely different sentences or with uh, another sentence that we can do with a comma and a fanboy is she likes to drink tea comma but he prefers the coffee so we are using the comma and the but to show that we are linking two different complete sentences and then similarly we can use a semicolon in the place of that instead and over here if we are doing with fragments and sentences then it can be like although she likes going out comma she does prefer staying at home sometimes as well or she can say although she likes she likes going out but sometimes she prefers to stay at home in that case however what rakhni bitti ke although gets you know in ki but and although means the same thing the only difference is although i'm the first time use kar raha tha but i'm the pasar use kar raha tha that's all so there that is some of the examples another example of a sentence fragment are because of the rain in itself is incomplete in case not explaining anything because the rain doesn't complete form a complete thought it leaves us wondering what happens because of the rain so it's a fragment similarly an example of the sentence is anita called me today because it's completely done and there's nothing left to add on to it now an example on linking clauses an art installation in dublin ohio features 109 concrete ears of corn comma though the piece is actually called field of corn with osage oranges locals have dubbed it corn hinge over here here is the underlined part the first line is this which says an art installation in dublin ohio features 109 concrete ears of corn which is a complete sentence in itself just refer to comma after the comma, comma we have the word though and if you remove the word though and start from here the piece is actually called field of corn with osage orange the locals have dubbed it corn hinge it in itself again is a complete sentence so sentence plus sentence and what are the different ways of dealing with it a is no change which is not correct because we are not using any fan boys over here and the comma in itself is not enough sentence or sentence don't know either either full stop or not also comma or fan boy or not also together either semicolon or not also your case matter yeah neither just comma matter so when you see a is not the right answer b ma full stop use gareko sa which can be used so b is most likely i'm the answer c ma k pen use gareko sa na which is not going to work out at all and d ma semicolon yeah use gareko sa instead of using here if it was over here then it would have make complete sense but since it isn't like that b is our correct answer moving on to supplements let's get look at the example over here an epic source of pilgrimage the 500 mile camino de santiago in spain attracts thousands of people every year so over here an epic source of pilgrimage and then we have been given an explanation of what the pilgrimage is 
The 500 miles Camino de Santiago in Spain attracts thousands of people every year. Now, it says no change, which does seem likely, Kineki, a source of pilgrimage, an epic source of pilgrimage in itself is not a complete sentence because we don't know because it's not a complete sentence. There is no subject. So it's a fragment. And we have comma, the 500 mile Camino de blah blah blah, 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 blah. So this in itself is a sentence. So it's a fragment plus sentence for combination. So we can either use a comma or we can use fanboys. But not together separately. B says pilgrimage, the 500 mile blah blah blah. It's not that the 500 mile is not needed for us. It's a still a very much needed information because it says an epic source and the 500 mile is explaining how it is an epic source. So we cannot put it between two commas and make it a non-essential plus. C says pilgrimage, the 500 mile Camino de Santiago, which basically shows that they are trying to put this inside commas, making it something that we can skip on and if we skip this part and read the sentence and it will become an epic source of pilgrimage in Spain attracts blah 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 but the main important term gets inside and then we have D pilgrimage dash blah 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 dash the place if you're going to place the dashes like this then it indicates the same thing as the comma so over here we can use a bit of logic as well. If you have answer meals of you you can meal some and as it is do it a mini answer the file one did an amla you have to mean answer then sir so there's no way C or D can be our answer and neither is B our answer so A is most likely the correct answer. Moving on we have punctuation over here the main punctuations we need are full stop comma semicolon and dash and I'll also tell you what are the different ways we can use them in our sentences. First of all, comma. Firstly, it is used to separate a list of items. For example, we can say flowers such as jasmine, comma rose, comma lily. It's basically used in listing things. Second is separate non-essential clauses from the sentence. Like we have done previously, the epic uh, the epic tale, comma, something, blah, blah, blah. Then the sentence over here that is in the fragment actually inside is a non-essential clause and which is not needed whatsoever. Three is link dependent clause to independent clauses. And the fourth is link independent clauses with the help of coordinating fanboy junctions, which means dependent clauses to independent clauses, meaning fragments like sentences sung Add garnagolagi and independent clauses or like one person sentence or sentence that add garnagolai, but only when it is also used with a fanboy. So, comma used with fanboy. So, basically, something we've already studied. Second is full stop. It is obviously used, first of all, to separate items in a list of two. So, completely different one, separate garnagolai, and also to split subject and a verb. And along the lines, it also comes before preposition. Then we move on to punctuations for other examples, semicolons. So this can be used already like a substitute for comma or fanboy. But how we can use a semicolon? So one of its purpose is that. And sometimes it can be used to list things when comma is already present. So if you're listing things, I'm the comma use got sir. But could even this object mate comma pale then but use wakasavanite, we can use a semicolon instead. And then we have column. It's because the data purposes himself want to list things. For example, I like flowers such as dash dash dot dot and then we can list the flowers. And it is also used to explain. Sara, in this case, say how it works is a first sentence has to be given and then a semicolon has to be used. And then the explanation should be given. Until and unless a radical sentence is a radical statement is not a sentence or an independent clause, if you may say so, then we cannot use the colon. Similarly, dash can be used to separate non-essential elements, just like comma, comma. We can also use dash and a dash. 
Now here's an example on punctuation. For individuals with less melanin in their skin, overexposure to the sun can cause three things, freckles, wrinkles, and melanoma. Over here, we are listing things. So what are the ways, what are the only punctuations we can use in such case? We have a semicolon, right? But how is it supposed to be used? Only when it is a complete sentence. If the comma was removed and a full stop was kept over here and this section was removed, then it would still be a complete sentence. For individuals with less melanin in their skin, overexposure to the sun can cause three things. This in itself is a complete sentence. So that is the only reason why we can use semicolon as well. And then we have listed ingredients out. So that is why C is our right answer. So with all of this, we're in the end of the reading and writing section of the SAT. I hope that some of these tips and tricks really helped you out and you learned something new and also had a few revision done. I hope you score well in your SAT. And if you want to know more and want to practice more, we can always practice from sites such as Khan Academy or the Blue Book app. And SAT, the uh, SAT classes are provided here at ECI as well. They have great teachers and they also have great materials as well, along with great books that they will provide you. So please do visit ACI.